I wanted to tip my hat to Mac Miller, actually. Uh, I'm, I'm a big Mac Miller fan. I, I think that kid was so talented. The whole strings intro in that song was, was a tip of the hat to Mac. Hey friends, it's your girl Emily Curl with iHeartRadio back in my iHeartRadio studio. And today we're hanging out with country music singer and songwriter. We've got LV Shane here. Hi, LV. Hey y'all, how you doing? It's good to see you again. It's so good to see you. How is everything? I mean, we have the debut album, so much to discuss in this fast track. How has this time been for you? It's been crazy. I've been teasing my team and telling them we're going to retire after this year because I uh, I don't know how we could how we can beat it. But uh, if we do, man, it, it it's going to continue to be pretty incredible. Elvie, where are you, by the way? I'm at the Cayasus again. I think this is where I was at last time I talked to you guys uh, back in the spring. I'm up at our house in Kentucky that we we bought and moved into back in February of this year. When Mandy, when we found out, you know, she was pregnant, her parents lived about half a mile up the road. So yeah, it just it's it's nice to have them close and have some help close by. Cause I mean, I, I was home like 20 days between August and two weeks ago. It was uh, it, oh we were my busy. gosh, so it was wild. It, it was awesome. I mean, we we went out on the tour with Brooks and Dunn. We had a lot of fun. Those guys were great to us. Uh, the crew, the the bands, we made a lot of friends, learned a lot, and uh, it was really cool to watch my my band grow because these guys have been sticking with me for for years, and they've never really had the opportunity to go just go out there and shine. And just hearing from all of these, you know, professional players that are playing in Brooks and Dunn, Travis Tritt's band, and just hearing you know what they had to say about my guys and how great they sound it was it was really cool so this is our fast track right so we're going to go through a few of our favorites from backslider so i've gone through i've picked out my favorites of course with the iheart team and it's right. interesting you talk about because obviously we have my boy which is this vulnerable emotional song and then we got some rowdy songs on there so the first one i want to touch on is love cold beer and cheap smoke which i feel like is just a good old classic country song yeah it's, it's i love that song so much that uh i love the way that song came about too because it kind of touches on uh the the writing community within nashville and kind of a uh, more traditional approach of writing with your friends uh much like maybe willie and waylon and, and all those guys would have done that song was originally written by my friend russell sutton who was a writer on uh my boy and drew green so russell sutton drew green lee star nick columbia those were four you know there's four or five guys that were my my first kind of brotherhood of, of writers in, in town. And so they wrote that song like four or five years ago. And and our group always had loved that song. And we I had played it out a little bit and stuff, but there was just like parts of the song that didn't really feel true to me. And during the, the pandemic, I was just going through a bunch of songs in my Dropbox that friends had sent me and stuff. And I was listening to that song and I was like, man, I, I love like, you know, 60 70 percent of this song but like if i change this or this or if i put this little story in here maybe it would feel more real to me so i just did it and i sent the song over to to russell and drew and i was like hey man you know i you guys did a great job uh i feel like this really lends itself this version really lends itself more to me and they just text back and was like well crap looks like there's three writers on here now you know <laughs> Oh. Wait, so what was the exact part that you changed? It was like the the second verse was different and then the the bridge was different. That song was definitely, you know, the intent was to show a little bit of the rowdier foundation of where I come from and who I am with that song. So I mean, in talking about LV, where you grew up and how you grew up, I love Sundays in the South because I grew up in Georgia. And yeah. so it like very much took me back to this place of like being with my family. It was like, you know, after church on Sunday, it was the whole thing. For you growing up, you know, is that how you pictured your Sunday? What did that look like for you? Yeah, it, I feel like if there was any day of the week that really painted the best picture of what it was like for me growing up in rural America, and it's Sundays in the South. In Kentucky, we, we claim to be the South, depending on where you're at in the state. But <laughs> I think the culture is, you know, very, very similar anywhere from from Indiana, Wisconsin even, that, a bunch of rednecks up in Wisconsin. I love going up there too, you know, but the pictures in that song, that that first verse, you know, verbatim, we would we would get up, get in my mom's Ford tours, 
it would be, you know, the NASCAR preliminary stuff in 90s country on the way to the quick stop. Oh, yes. You know, yeah. get a yoo-hoo, turn around, head back towards church, hope that we don't get caught by the train, you know, because we were <laughs> definitely going to be late. My mom, I remember when I was a kid, we used to always like run up to the door and you would put your ear at, at the door. And if it was quiet, you knew everyone in church was praying. So you didn't want to interrupt prayer. But if you heard singing, then you could walk on in. Then you're good to go. And then, of course, you know, there's there's always got to be a, a certain level of debauchery involved in, uh, in growing up. Uh, so, you know, get out of church and maybe sneak a a Bud Light out of the daddy's igloo cooler and run off and try it or whatever. But uh, you know, good good blend of rock and roll and Jesus and country music's uh, a great mediator in between them, I believe. I also love how you had the All Fly Away sampling in there. That was so cool. Like, where, did you always know you wanted to do something like that? I actually had I had a write scheduled with uh, with a different writer the day before we ended up writing that song, I believe. And he ended up having to cancel, but I was sitting at the house and that first verse came to me in like 30 seconds. It was, it was just, it just kind of came to me. And I think just because it, I was lucky enough that it was like, all of it was true and all of it rhymed. And so I ended up in the room with Derek Sutherland instead. And I took that verse into him and, you know, we just got to work and we were trying to figure out, I think we wrote both verses first. We get, we got to the chorus and it was just like, man, we were singing, I'll fly away, oh glory. And I was like, dang, man, that's the, that's the melody and everything. And it felt like such a, a great lead in to, and, a, and a way to honor gospel hymns that, you know, I, I grew up saying, I, I really feel like hymns uh, train my voice and, and train me as a, as a singer in, in a way. And then we, you know, me and Derek, we went back and forth on whether that chorus was right or not. And, and finally, you know, I was just like, dude, it just, it feels great. And the, uh, the Brumley family, uh, Albert Brumley, I believe was the original writer of, of that song. So we, I reached out to him, uh, to the estate cause I wasn't sure if it was public domain or anything. So it's cool to uh, be able to share writing credits with, with Albert Brumley, even though, you know, he wrote so many beautiful hymns in his lifetime. And, and, you know, now he's a, a co-writer of mine, even though I, I never got to meet him, but there's a cool thing too about the placement of that song within the record. I, I, I screwed up. That was supposed to be the second song. I, <laughs> so the whole record kind of starts with where we're at now with I Will Run. And it's a very circular song, but very at this moment in my life. You know, my intent was to go back in time in chronological order in my life. Well, that would have put Sundays in the South as the first song, but I messed up when I wrote it down, I just wasn't paying that close of attention and we, it went through or whatever. But then I was like, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to change it. It's like, it's just another part of, you know, being human and backslider is all about just being human. And I was like, yeah, I screwed up and that's part of the record too now. Uh, but what's, what I noticed just a couple weeks ago that was really cool is you come out of, I will run and it's talking about all these things you're running from. Right. And then what you're running to. And then the next song is called Love, Cold Beer, and Cheap Smoke. And the chorus is, you know, running out of town till we ran out of road, running our mouths, nothing we didn't know. So it's, it's kind of works itself out in a weird way. Like it was supposed yeah. to. Yeah. So. Well, and then we go to County Roads too, which I want to talk about that, which I love this one because this one's like a, a redneck revenge song. We didn't know we needed. And I was into it. My favorite line. <laughs> Wrench in my hand, sure put a wrench in my plans. I was like, oh, let's go. Yeah, that, my dad. Um, dad had a few trucks. You know, never made a big buck doing any of it. He just loved the trucking industry and loved trucks. And I was the only affordable help. You know, I, I would I would work for him till four in the morning on the weekends or, or whatever. And I'm sometimes I missed out on time hanging out with my friends or being able to spend time with my girlfriend or whatever. But I always, you know, I had a wrench in my hand. I, and I learned so much about life doing that too. Uh, that that song's super special to me because of uh, that's one of my favorite lines on the whole record too that was the first song that i wrote with oscar charles and dan couch yeah oscar charles dan couch oscar produced a record dan is is uh just one of the best humans you'll ever meet and has been a writer on a lot of uh kip moore stuff with kip and and i, oh, I yeah. love i love kip stuff too and uh but then like adam wood and doug johnson who also wrote i will run Sundress and Saturday Night Me With. Those four writers in particular were very 
instrumental early on in helping me find my voice and my sound and helping me figure out how I wanted to tell these stories. And County Roads was the song that set the, the standard for, okay, so let's tell these stories, but how honest can we be? And, you know, like, let, let's try to approach it like we did with County Roads, because Oscar was playing this part. Uh, uh, uh. We were kicking some stuff around. I was like, man, why don't we just tell the truth? And I was like, you know, I got a public education, but it didn't come from class. It came from the long rides home on the bus in the back. And I was like, hell, that even kind of rhymes. Why don't we just say that? So that song, I kind of got to live vicariously uh, through the song for a few minutes. I, I had a Fox Body Mustang. I love those cars so much. And I had one for just a little while. It sit in my driveway and it had a bent frame where my cousin had wrecked it. So I never did get to drive it. But in that in that song, you know, I got to drive it for a little while. So uh, just living out that fantasy. <laughs> yeah, it was it was uh, it was cool. And uh, I, I love that song so much. It's that seems to be a lot of people's favorite. OK, LB, I got two more for you. One I want to touch on. You kind of just mentioned it. It's Saturday Night Me. This one is my favorite on the album. Awesome. And I love this one because I feel like it kind of gives me like Eric Church vibes, Miranda Lambert, something about the lyrics. And my favorite line is your angels and my demons just seem to get along. Tell me about this one. Yeah, I think that's a theme that's been touched on a lot. Yeah, Doug Johnson came into the room with Adam Wood. Doug said, hey, I got this idea called Sunday Morning You. And I was like, well, you know, Doug, I want to talk about me. I want to talk about I, I want to talk about number one. Of them. And, uh, <laughs> so I was like, what if it was called Saturday Night Me? And, uh, and it was like, you know, what if it's like when Saturday Night Me runs into Sunday Morning You? And uh, I was talking to somebody yesterday, and they were, they were, that was their favorite song too on the record. And they they were talking about how the way that it, it comes together, you see this collision of you know kind of opposite forces that creates this balance. And and that song is a huge tribute to my wife. Sometimes how I see myself and how I see her, that was like the best metaphor to uh, to put together. But that line that you said that you know that's. Kudos to, to Adam Wood. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm a co-writer on all these songs and I like to give credit where credit is due. But Adam Wood, I remember when we were writing that, he said, man, this this might be dumb, but what if it was like, you know, my, you know, your angels and my demons, they just seem to get What in the hell could be dumb about that, Adam? That's brilliant, man. So, yeah, right? But uh, yeah, so she just walked into the... To, the room here. Oh, room. she so, wanted to jump in? You want to say hi? Want to say hi. <laughs> oh, Always I love a good car. Hi. So here's, hi. <laughs> here's Sunday morning you right here. I was just telling Elvie, that's my favorite on the album. What do you think? What's your favorite? Do you have one? Um, I Will Run is probably my favorite. Yeah, I love it. Well, thanks for saying hi. <laughs> well, have a good day. Thank yeah, you. you too. Okay, Elvie, last one for you, and then we're going to let you go is I just want to touch on the very last song on the album, Miles with My Mama, the ending of the album. Why did you want to end with this one? Miles is my favorite song on the record. It is, okay. When I was putting a record together and when I'm writing and I'm picking these songs out, like the, the most important thing, I just have a heavy conscience and anxiety out of the roof. And I already mm -hmm. stay up late enough every night thinking about dumb crap like I don't donor compatibility <laughs> or whatever, you know? <laughs> but uh it all went back to the trying to, you know, capture this honest approach with everything. And, and in the rest of the record, everything is, you know, as honest as possible with, you know, the added drama or living vicariously through the song, like County Roads or whatever. But you yeah. got to change, you got to change the name of the car or the, the road name or something to make it rhyme with the line before it sometimes. But with, with Miles, you know, play by play, that song is is honest to my life, my relationship with my father, the way that I feel as an artist out on the road now and being gone from from my family. It starts off with a picture of you know how my dad would get ready to leave, and there was a song by Steve Earle called "Little Rock and Roller" on his first record, which is my all-time favorite record ever, uh, Guitar Town. My dad was a truck driver, so when he would leave, he would tell me, you know, if I missed him, to listen to Little Rock and Roller on the Guitar Town record. And that was Steve's song to his boy. So it says, Little Rock and Roller on the radio, you're gonna miss your boys, but it's time to go. It just feels like 
being a truck driver to me and I've, I've worked on the road myself. So, but the, the second verse was, was super important to me because my brother and my dad at the time weren't, my brother just, they weren't seeing eye to eye. Their relationship wasn't very great. And I remembered this scenario. I went home, we wrote that whole first verse and like, I think half of the chorus that day in the right. And then we left on a good note. And I went home and I was thinking about that and trying to just like finish the song. I remember when I was a kid, my dad had been telling my little brother he would take him fishing and he just hadn't done it. And he kept saying he was going to, but didn't get around to it. And one time my little brother was taking a nap in my mom and dad's bed and my dad's laying there beside him. My dad's awake, brother's asleep. And in my brother's sleep, he says, my daddy's going to take me fishing. And I just remember how it, it kind of destroyed my dad a little bit. So I was like, man, if I could just figure out a way to make to make them stop and listen and, and realize, you know, and they're doing great now. I, I, yeah. I like to think it's because of my song, but uh, you know, <laughs> brought them together. probably not, but uh, you know, and then Cats in the Cradle was a song that my dad and still is a song. Sometimes, you know, my dad's asked me to come hang out with him or do something. And I'm just like, I got to do this. I got to do that. And he's like, all right, Cats in the Cradle, you know, this cat in the cradle never got a silver spoon. Now I run the roads just like you. And it, it, it was at that mm -hmm. moment, like I started the song kind of as a tribute to my dad and truck drivers. And then I ended up calling him out on his BS. And then I ended up finding empathy for him in the bridge and seeing the relation between, you know, what I'm doing as a musician and artist and, and what he's doing as a truck driver. And it's just, the blessing is you get to do something you love to do, but the curse is you always say yes more. So you, you end up before you know it, you've given all your time away and you don't have time for, for people that deserve it, you know, on, yeah. on, the, on the backside. But uh, yeah, that song's super, super special to me. I wanted to tip my hat to Mac Miller, actually. Uh, I'm, I'm a big Mac Miller fan. I think that kid was so talented. And there's a song that he has called 2009 that 2009 was a really, really rough year for me. So the, the whole strings intro in that song was, was a tip of the hat to Mac. Oh, and wow. Oh, that's amazing. I, uh, and then the, the outro, one day I was listening to, I believe it's Ronnie Millsap. I, he came on the radio. I was driving through Denver and he came on like a gold station. Is I wouldn't have missed it for the world. And it sounded like this closing of the curtains. And that's for whatever reason, that gave me the idea for the, the outro of, of that. And I just wanted to have time to listen to these great musicians doing what they do and have time to reflect on the song and then it turned into time to reflect on the album so I, i'm going for days about that song it's uh that's that's my iliad and odyssey you know yeah well Elvie, it's such a great ending to again such an amazing debut album backslider out now everyone go listen and it's always so good to see you thank you so much for the time you too thank you guys for having me i know i got i'm a little long-winded but i grew up <laughs> baptist so it, it comes natural so. well, me too that's why i'm in this role it works <laughs> thank you all so much i appreciate it Thanks so much for watching our Fast Track with LV Shane. Make sure you check out his debut album, Backslider, that's out now on iHeartRadio, and we'll see you next time.